Chapter 15 Eric, his mother called up the stairs. You have a visitor. He found Griffin Conley waiting at the front door. Oh, hi. Is it okay? Griffin asked. I was just wondering if maybe we could hang out a little. No, no, I mean, sure, no problem, Eric sputtered. Come on in. I was just, um, I know, I shouldn't just invite myself over. Eric didn't answer at first. It was a surprise to see Griffin standing in the living room. His black eye was barely noticeable anymore. The boys hadn't talked much since that trouble at recess. It's good to see you, he said, and he almost meant it. Griffin nodded, head bobbing and weaving like a boxer ducking punches. You haven't been around much. Yeah, like so busy, tons of homework and like I've been doing some dog walking for the neighbors and dog walking, huh? It's not as glamorous as it sounds, Eric joked. Griffin laughed. Good money though, right? It's okay. There was a moment of silence with the two boys standing in opposition. Griffin scratched his nose with the back of his thumb. So, Eric called to the kitchen. Mom, we're going to go up to my room, okay? Since Mrs. Hayes first met Griffin at the supermarket, she'd only seen him a couple of other times and always in her house. Whenever Griffin had invited Eric over, Mrs. Hayes had come up with a reason why not. Too much homework. They need to go shopping. Chores to be done. Whatever. She said she liked Eric home, but he suspected there was more to it than that. Mrs. Hayes didn't say it outright, but it seemed to Eric that perhaps his mother's intent initial enthusiasm for Griffin Conley had cooled to something else. It was not like her to answer the door and hastily retreat to the kitchen. Eric had a futon in his room that doubled as a spare bed. Griffin sank into it while Eric sat on the floor, leaning back on his hands. Griffin smiled, but it didn't quite reach his eyes. He rubbed his hands on his jeans. Where's Rudy? He's been adopted by the family down the block, Eric quipped. They've got twins, and Rudy fits right in. It's like the triplet they never had. Griffin crossed his arms, looked around the room. It was like he had something to say but no idea how to say it. For the first time since Eric had known him, Griffin seemed unsure of himself. So, Eric said, stealing Griffin's line, what's up? Griffin snorted and looked away. Are you mad at me? It feels like things got weird between us after Helen back got hurt at recess. He didn't get hurt, Eric insisted. You hurt him. There's a difference. Griffin's eyes rounded. We were just fooling around. Eric frowned, unsatisfied. Look, I don't know what there is to talk about. I don't know why I did it, Griffin suddenly blurted. He looked Eric in the eye, and Eric knew it was as true as anything Griffin had ever said to him. Griffin didn't know why. I just... Griffin raised his hands in two fists, let them drop. Everybody keeps asking me the same question principal, the house leader, Mrs. Ryan, or that stupid counselor, Mr. Floyd. Why did you do it? Why, why, why? He said in a firm voice. And I'm telling you, I don't know. I just did it. Eric's shoulders flickered, the slightest of shrugs. You know that tooth you once asked me about, Griffin began? Tooth? Oh, the one in that wooden box in your room? Yeah, I remember. Do you still want to know? Sure, yeah, whatever, Eric feigned indifference. A whisper of a smile came to Griffin's face. Once again, he was back in control. It was my tooth. He opened his mouth wide, pointing. That's a cap, see? My real tooth got knocked out in a fight. Eric wondered why Griffin was telling him this story. Had he come over to say exactly this? What's the point, Eric asked. The point? Griffin shook his head. We're the same. That's the point. The same? Eric didn't speak. A storm seemed to pass inside his brain, full of clouds and rain, and it was hard to hold on to one clear thought. Just those words. The same. The same. He seemed to feel everything at once. Denial, disgust, and the fear that Griffin Conley might be right. Grinning, Griffin tapped a fingernail against a tooth. Click, click. That's right, he said, courtesy of dear old dad.
He's a mean drunk. Eric thought about Griffin's black eye, about Griffin's father in a ragged bathrobe, slumped in a kitchen chair, slurping down a bowl of cereal, the breakfast of champions. Eric thought about the way Hal Mack could be such an annoying pest. Maybe there were good reasons why things happened the way they did, and maybe none of it mattered anyway. Griffin Conley was a bully. That was the stone-cold fact. In the end, did it matter why? All those people say they want to help me, Griffin sneered. You should sit in a room with them sometime, Eric. It's all smiles and politeness and concerned expressions. They tell me how they know I'm really a good kid deep down. The contempt in Griffin's voice was thick. They don't know me. I can see right through them. Bunch of liars. Eric didn't know what to say. I'm going to go get some chips or something, he said, rising and moving to the door. Just no pretzels, Griffin joked. Right, Eric said, remembering Hallenbeck. Maybe we should stay away from pretzels for a while. When Eric got back to the room, Griffin wasn't there, but he entered a minute later. Bathroom, he explained. His mood seemed different, lighter somehow. You know, it's not like I did anything that bad, he told Eric. Let's face it, kids like Hallenbeck are always going to get beat on. It's the law of the jungle. Only the strong survive. We're in middle school, Eric countered, not a jungle. Griffin shook his head. Just like that, the old confidence was back. No, you are wrong. It's still a jungle, the survival of the fittest. The sooner you figure this out, Eric, the better. I don't believe that, Eric said. Griffin blinked, blew the bangs out of his eyes. They'd hit, they had hit an impasse. When you think about it, Eric, we're all basically animals. I think that's why I was fed up with Hallenbach that day. I mean, come on. You've seen those nature shows on television. Hallenbach is like the sick gazelle in the herd, limping along. The one that gets eaten. It's not fair, but that's life. I don't make the rules. Eric listened, but didn't answer. You of all people know I'm right, Griffin persisted. Don't try to con me. You know what it's like. We're all animals. That's why you called Cody a weasel. It was a stupid thing to say, Eric countered. I didn't mean it. Griffin grinned. Sure. He stood and slowly wandered around the room, running a finger along the spines of books on the shelves, bending to read the plaques on Eric's Little League trophies. Griffin picked up a small pile of CDRs, the songs and artists written out by a careful hand. Eric reached for them a little too hastily. Griffin pulled away, sensing their value. He read one out loud. Eric, rock on, love dad. Aw, isn't that sweet, he teased. Gimme those, Eric demanded. Griffin spun around, pretending to tuck them into his shirt. When Eric grabbed his arm, Griffin laughed. Here you go, chill out, buddy, I'm just messing with you. It's not funny. Don't get all sensitive on me, Eric. Griffin could see that Eric was flustered. He seemed to take pleasure in it. Eric glanced at the digital clock, the way a drowning man might scan the water in hope of a life preserver. Look, it's getting... Yeah, yeah, I've got to go anyway. Eric escorted Griffin down the stairs and out the door. He watched Griffin pick up a skateboard and push it off down the driveway and into the street. No helmet, naturally. Eric felt relieved and more confused than ever. What is he up to? Eric wondered. Later that night, after dinner, Rudy made a discovery. Teary-eyed, he came into the television room holding his ceramic baseball bank. I'm missing $27! All my birthday money is gone! Two sets of eyes, Rudy's and his mother's, settled on Eric. Don't look at me! I never touched your money! Rudy's lip quivered. Mom? Are you sure, Rudy? Maybe you misplaced it. Rudy was positive. But if Eric didn't take it, and Mom, if you didn't take it, Mrs. Hayes fixed her eyes on Eric. The look on her face said it all. She had a pretty good idea where the money had gone. A sudden thought leaped into Eric's mind. A few minutes later, he went to check on his CDs. The gifts from his father? One of them was missing. <laughs>